In post-war Britain, car manufacturers struggled to get new products to market. Steel shortages were the most serious problem, but aluminium was in large supply, having been used on military aircraft. Morris Wilkes, chairman of Rover, saw a potential market for a utility vehicle that could be suitable for peacetime rural needs. Using aluminium bodywork, this was seen as a good stopgap product to keep the firm's Solihull factory busy. Launched at the Amsterdam Motor Show on the 30th of April 1948, the new car was hailed a huge success. Easy maintenance was an important feature, complete with easy removal of all the body panels. And right from the start, some unusual versions were produced. Special military versions were quickly introduced, including the lightweight half-ton model, ideal for parachute props, and the cab forward design, giving a larger payload. Land Rovers were used by the armed forces of over 140 countries worldwide. By the late 1960s, Land Rover was doing research in America, noting the emergence of off-roaders as a lifestyle accessory. Gordon Lashford and Spen King took the concept and developed the idea that was to revolutionize the off-road market. The Range Rover was launched on June 17, 1970. It earned Land Rover a Design Council Award and has even been exhibited at the Louvre in Paris as an example of modern sculpture. By the mid-80s, Land Rover products were overtaken in the sales charts by lifestyle off-roaders like the Shogun from Japan. But by combining teams of engineers and designers and production engineers, Land Rover produced its own rival from concept to launch in 30 months. Launched on September the 9th in Paris, the Discovery was a huge success, quickly outselling its nearest Japanese rival by three to one in the UK. By now, the Range Rover was over 20 years old. Still being an icon, Land Rover took a conservative route with the replacement. The new Range Rover was launched to the press in August 94. To complete the lineup and compete head on with a new wave of Japanese SUVs, Land Rover came up with the Freelander. With a unitary monocoque chassis, a first for the Land Rover range, and its unique hill descent system, the Freelander looks set to take the lead in its chosen market. From a stopgap model in 1948 to the Freelander of 1998, Land Rover has grown beyond all expectations. It now has a strong model range and a reputation that rivals covet. And the story is set to continue.